everybody. We're live. That's awesome. Look at it. It's a boy. <laughs> what a way to spend a birthday. No, what, exactly. a, what a waste of a birthday spent with us. Oh, think? I know. No kidding. Right? <laughs> I, so I only have one more hour to go. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. If anybody doesn't know who our special guest is tonight, this is uh, Dr. Don Livermore. He is the uh, master blender at Wiser's and, and Corby. And hold on, we've got another guest here for your birthday. Let's see. Let's see if we can get you in here. Oh, there we go. He <laughs> made it. He, he did. <laughs> <laughs> can we hear you? Can you hear us? Oh, well, we cannot hear. hear you. No. Nope. No. Nope. He's oh, muted. Headphones. Yeah. Go. Uh, go. There oh, we go. go. I can hear myself. Yeah. We can hear you now. Got you now. Weird. It's going through this, but the audio's coming out there. Oh, well. Well, you're here now. Welcome. Welcome, Colin. How are you? Oh, now he's cut out again. No. You're gone. I cut it again. I see everybody with uh, happy birthday wishes. Thank you, everybody. That's uh, it, it's a hell of a way to spend a birthday for sure. Yeah. They, they must have got my uh, Instagram post today. That's right. Yeah, that's very cool. So is that, uh, can we reveal what age you are today? You can. Okay, well, we will just... Well, well, it's the Easter egg, right? It's the Easter egg that it's, is in the new Lot 40 Dark Oak, which is bottled at 48% alcohol. So you people out there do the uh, do the math. Yeah, there cool. you go. Yes. That that was not pre-planned, pre but I, I had thought about it when, uh, when I put my Instagram post out today. Yeah. Well, man, that, what a coincidence. 48% uh, ABV. Works 48. Right. Some, somebody made the comment, I can't wait till you get 52 yeah. <laughs> okay, Colin, are you with us now? Yeah, I'm just trying to get this headset to work. It's funny. Okay, well, we, we can hear oh. you now. You, you, you're looking great. So we only see <laughs> your cheek, though. All right. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Your whiskey collection looks great. So that's, right. well, there you go. Okay, okay. <laughs> we are there we go. In business. Okay, so. Um, one of the main events tonight is actually, uh, we've got some bottle giveaways as well. Why don't you, well, we'll start the people. We'll start. So for, I'm going to take this hat off now. Is that, oh yeah. Is that, is that, is that okay? <laughs> please keep it yeah. on, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so people that are joining us, uh, we usually do this as a Patreon only kind of event, but we figured it's a pretty big deal in the whiskey world. Yeah. So. We should uh, have this for everybody to watch. But basically what usually happens, if you are a Patreon, mm -hmm. we do these uh, dram clubs. Yes. And you become a part of a dram club and you get sent different whiskeys every month. That's right. And this this month is extra special because we're giving out some cool ones. Yes. We're giving out the original Lot 40. You're awesome. 100% rye. 100% rye. And then we are giving away the brand spanking new Lot 40 Dark Oak, which is just oh boy, really good. <laughs> not even out yet. Yeah, I know. You know what? I had to get to find a bottle in Ontario. Oh my yeah. god, <laughs> I bet you were going from store to store, Dr. Don, just <laughs> looking everywhere. Hey, yeah, it's in our brand center, uh, probably the only place I could get it at the moment. So, uh, I had to snag a bottle, yeah. Uh, but, uh what a fantastic whiskey from uh, early indications. It looks like it's going to do very, very well. Well, all I know is I hope it's on the shelves permanently. Hope it's on the shelf long enough for us to get another bottle of it. Yeah, yeah well, that's the idea. We'll see how it goes. But uh, we certainly would love to have this as a permanent release. Uh, our thoughts and our plans are uh, are looking that way. It's just, again, as anything goes, what are, what are the sales, right? And uh, yeah, for sure. Shelf, yeah. Right. So can we actually all maybe start with the uh, uh, we've we've got birthday drams here. Maybe we should all do birthday shots. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been I've been just dying. It's eleven o'clock at night here, and I've been dying <laughs> to open something. Open uh, my birthday. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you uh, what are you thinking? What are we starting with here? Uh, I, whatever you guys want to start with. I was debating that when I was uh, uh, prepping here. So do we go with the cast strength births or the lot 
lot 40. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. since we talked lot 40, why not? Hold okay. on. This, this is a shot. Keep though. in mind, it's a shot. There's no sip in this. This stuff. is a birthday shot. A Colin birthday Colin. shot. So I should grab something from behind me. Then. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Okay, Colin, what are you having? Oh, are we, we're doing this game then. Uh, uh, for my <laughs> friends in BC, I'll. I'll uh, Oh, oh yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah. Okay, fine. Let's do a BC uh, Seven Rebels. Okay, we got the uh, Seven Rebels here. We'll do that. Seven Rebels. All right, I'll pull out. I'll pull out one that I know Don's gonna really appreciate. Boom! Wiser's Legacy. Legacy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, my bottle's pretty uh, pretty down, been behind me, but yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Beauty guys. Go. Right. I didn't have the birthday party cups. I missed uh, missed that memo, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, happy birthday, Don. And guys. let's uh, put one back for you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Don. The man, the legend. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's a good shot. Hey, even as, oh. even as a shot. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very delicious. Um, so this is Dram Club tonight. So as we mentioned, uh, Dram Club is actually brought to you, everyone, this month of November from uh, Mr. Colin McDougall. So thank you for sponsoring the Dram Club this evening. Um, so our Dram Club members, yes, our Dram Club members have received the lineup uh, that you sent us here. So they all have... Including, um, including this bonus bottle, a little bonus bottle. Yeah, which is the uh, Jameson Cold Brew. So that's yes. the bonus, bonus bottle that everyone got. Um, uh, Dram Club this month also features uh, Pipe Creek 15. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you guys told... score one of those? We, we know a guy. <laughs> you know a guy that knows a guy? <laughs> and then, uh, of Pull course, some serious yeah. strings. Yeah, we have the the new twenty two year old Wisers in the Dram Club. Oh, we have the new Lot Forty Dark Oak. Nice, and we have the the, the classic, the classic the legend Lot Forty Hundred Percent Rye. So everyone at home um, that's in Dram Club, they are drinking literally the same bottles as us. Um, okay. So hopefully we will see a lot of comments from the Dram Club people on the side of the screen here. Can you see those comments, by the way? Oh, I can. I, I, by the way, thank you, everybody, for wishing me a happy birthday. It was just scrolling right down there. Uh, thank you, everyone. Oh. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, so where to start? I, I yeah. think, you know, like, in my mind, I always go percentage-wise and work your way up. But it's your birthday. You make a call. Oh, so we're, we're tasting all five of those. Oh, I'm yeah. glad I stuck my bar behind me tonight. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you can try all those, too. You can try all of that. I, I, I don't have the cold brew. I'm uh, sorry. I'm squinting at your screen there, seeing what we have. We have... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you want to start with a regular Lot 40? For sure. Sure. I'm going to have to open a bottle here. My goodness. Whoa. Might I, uh, Might I add what a sexy new pack on that you guys have there? We've got, Am I right? There's oh. the, the old. We've got the old uh, on the bottom shelf there. Yeah. Check that out side by side, man. I've got mine both here too. Yeah, the package changed. And and for those who are out there now, I'll get on Instagram and Twitter quite often. People will say, are they same? Are they different or anything? They are, it's the same recipe. Nothing's changed. We just cleaned up the label. I think it looks much, much better. Uh, more clean, more defined. We wanted to emphasize that 100% rye. That's classic rye. Yeah. For you. yeah. I, you know what? I will say though, since we're on the top of the packaging, like, this lot for you, dark oak packaging or marketing is so nice. Super badass. Super yeah, looks, badass. Looks I, I can't take credit for it. Uh, certainly, uh, the, the packaging guys did a bang up job on that. For yeah, sure. okay. incredible. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> Scott McCreary. <laughs> yeah, Scott. <laughs> I, and I know they have design. Scott's certainly lead on it, and they certainly have design well. agents. Yeah. Well. It's a well, team it's like, for sure. But yeah. It's like the black with the silver and then the copper accents on the outlines. Like that that looks really, really good. Yeah. It, I think cool. we're we're telling the story about La Forty on the bottle really well. You know, Ooh. it's kind of it's kind of worked me out of a job here, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh but you know, like we just seem the hundred percent rye. Like I just think the labels are just really coming into their own. But you um, know what? Like the the marketing it definitely like there are bottles that I don't know if they're any good or not, but I won't buy them just because they don't catch my eye. Like, it, and it's, yeah, it's oh, yeah. Like, there has there's been a uh, certain Scotch whiskeys that I've uh, 
avoided and then they changed the label like oh this like, looks, oh, that right. looks delicious that looks good. I'm gonna buy this. <laughs> yeah it, yeah it's certainly it's half the battle i've actually seen software where uh the lcbo has done before where they actually track your eye oh. and they know exactly what you look at on the shelf when they go in the store so they can actually gauge what bottles people are actually looking at just based on the label right and see what the eyes pot. it's really cool but cool to see that. I always thought Big Brother would be used for other reasons <laughs> yeah. besides whiskey, but hey, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's scary now that, uh, yeah. that they can do that. But it's oh, kind of yeah. the same idea as like, you know, you hear like Johnny Walker changed his label to be sideways in order to catch yeah, your eye yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, and it's, it's like, oh, this has got kind of the same angle going on. Modern, modern research, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, I must say Lot 40 does stand out that way with the, the angle yeah. label yeah. and everything. Uh, I know those people that are into TTB submissions and everything, uh, when doing the TTB submission for our uh, Cash Tank Lot 40, you know, I, I'm picking up the dark oak, but down the label, they felt that the percent alcohol was hidden. Oh. So they had to straighten it up just a little bit more for the US uh, regulations. Hmm. So, so what has to be appear on the front label? Those are little things that I have to deal with on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, you can't have the percent alcohol off to the side, and it has to be legible as it's sitting on there. On the like that's table. that's funny. Yeah, that's really here's, weird. Here's a good comment. Uh, Tim Dietrich says, "I don't need the LCBO or my wife knowing how often I go." <laughs> 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 okay, Tim, we won't we won't rat you out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you too. I hear you on that one. <laughs> okay. there, there is a second room in my house with product too. Not only, <laughs> yeah, a secret room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Getting into this, uh, all of our uh, jam clubbers that are tasting along right now. Some of it's what's cool about it is some of these these guys and gals they've never. We really promote the Canadian whiskey scene, and some of them don't get to try it at all. So yeah. this is a nice, nice. Uh, turn for them absolutely yeah. and yeah. so oh it just the mm -hmm. just segue perfectly into another discussion topic which is the fact that there are going to be some products going to our friends uh uh in the south very soon so yes yeah the cash drink lot 40 just got released uh in a couple of states uh in the u.s right now for the first time and uh Excellent. and it's wow. exciting i know we announced it a year ago almost uh the last time your show and it's finally there it's taking some time, like I said, TTB can be a little bit difficult at times, but it, it's there, it's on shelf, and they're excited. I mean, and, I think I think they're just going to go through through real real quick. And what states is it in? Do you know right now? Uh, it is in Illinois, and it's in Massachusetts, and those are the two I know. If people that are uh, on the U.S. feed right now and they really want to know, our distributor in the U.S. is Hoteling, H O T. A L I N G dot com. You could go to their website and they'll they'll tell you where you can purchase it. Awesome. And was it not um, Forty Nine Wellington as well? Forty Nine Wellington as well, and they're in different stores uh, as well. So they're not all in the same store, so you can't go. In. So I, I would suggest go to hoteling dot com, uh, and uh, if if there are US, US uh, you can certainly look at uh, acquiring a bottle. Cool. Yeah. I'm thirsty, by the way. Yeah, guys. Yeah, we, we might make you do another shot in a couple of minutes here. Yeah. And we've actually decided that anytime you use a word we don't know, which is pretty often, <laughs> <we're just> very... <laughs> Man, I, I wish I would have known that. I would have had my dick yeah. here. Get the wheel out. Get the wheel out. <laughs> yeah, where's it? Yeah, the yeah. wheel. We must have a wheel uh, up right on the side there. Well, uh, beside the Gooderham and Wart Seven Souls on the wall. Oh yeah, yeah. So don't ask me how much rye is my whiskey. Ask me how much four ethyl gyacol is in my whiskey. There. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got the dollar store, and they actually don't make noise. They just do. We're the making that so noise. We have to make the noise ourselves. <laughs> it, sounds like a, it sounds like an elephant. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry about uh, lot four. So back to whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Lot 40 is just exceptional. It's what I would call as our flavoring whiskey. Uh, most Canadian whiskey is blended, as you guys uh, well are aware, uh, at our distillery and most larger whiskey distilleries in Canada. We ferment all the grains separately, corn, wheat, rye, barley, uh, distill it separately, age it separately, and then we put it together at the end. And most Canadian whiskey is made of light corn whiskey. If you got, you're from, from the distillery from the West, um, uh, they usually will use a small grain to make their light-based whiskey. 
and then they'll add a little bit of the rye into it. So a lot 40 is our rye whiskey component that gives us flavor. So it's in a lot of our blends. I know I've been on, on, on your show before guys, and we've made the uh, legacy and we've done blending exercises. Yeah. A lot 40 is the DNA to what we do. It, it really yeah. is. I, I, I can't say that enough. Uh, uh, it's delicious. It's beautiful. Makes great cocktails. Very, very spicy. Huge Canadian hug. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Totally it's nice. right there. It had to me, it's like, it's always been this, like, uh, it's got this Jolly Rancher kind of apple, uh, sweet and sour thing going on. This is so, so delicious. Yeah. It, it, it's the complexity is unreal. And that, that's the idea with rye whiskey as well. Um, if you had a chance to sit in on a lecture with me from, if I dial up the science, uh, uh with your audience, rye gives, there's a reason why rye is very spicy. It's all in the structure of the, uh, of the molecule and that's where your four ethyl diethyl comes from and that's what i look for as a as a distiller and as a blender yeah i was waiting for it they're, they're dead i'm using pretty big words <laughs> i mean yeah well that's fine our jokes are so um can i call and can i put you on the spot yeah for sure what you got um what's a what's a lot 40 cocktail lot 40 cocktail yeah so <clears throat> i mean so I mean, uh, before I answer that, <laughs> um, I do like I'm not trying to I'm not just saying this, and I know you're gonna I would probably you know I'm, I'm, you don't trust me because I'm a portfolio consultant, but Law Forty is in that realm of spirits in general that is a neater on the rocks. You know, like it's okay. it, it is the way that it's made. Like Law Forty is so good. Like because uh, you know, don't forget cocktails. The the reason we made cocktails way back in the day was because the booze wasn't good, and you just <laughs> wanted to make some stuff alcoholic. And you, and you wanted to move stuff, right? So yeah. like in old taverns, they'd add bitters, you know, and bitters are concentrated flavor. And if you add enough bitters and sugar to anything, man, it's palatable, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the old fashioned, right? And so yeah. I'm going to contradict myself and tell you it's a great and an old fashioned, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, we're toning back the bitters now. Um, for me working with these, uh, there's a, there's a really classic bourbon drink uh, that I've always really liked uh, an American cocktail. that's called a sealback. Mm -hmm. where you're taking like a call this would be like an ounce of lot 40 um you know a uh, half ounce of like uh like an orange liqueur mm -hmm. um some dashes of angostura and peychaud's bitters is that creole bitters from down south it's really medic medicinal it's got a i've uh, got some kicking around here right up here um uh and then so you make that you make like a concentrated base and you top it with some sparkling it's very fancy wow. can you show us that um, bitters you're talking about real quick oh, of course yeah so angostura we all know and love uh peychaud's is uh is like the the tried and true i'll get a lot hold closer. on keep it is there a way that we can make it just him oh that we can see that good enough there we go yeah okay and where uh, do we get that so any place that sells like uh i mean like this isn't going to be in a grocery store like angostura right um there's like the crafty bartender there's a bunch of people online that are selling bitters too okay. uh you can get it from like cocktail kingdom uh bitters fall into that category where they are actually have they have alcohol in them but they um they're considered a food product because you you couldn't drink like bitters without getting sick, you know, like enough yeah. to try to get yeah. a buzz or something. It's, it's um, alcohol, I think. Jason, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jason, yeah, for sure. Jason so, Coates has a recipe as well. One part lot 40 in a glass. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, like that's no joke. That's like, that is the way to do it. I think um, Jason, that makes my job real easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll show you what I was doing last night though. Um, Cause I've got, I've got my Kochi maker. So this is like a white vermouth or like, you know, French vermouth. Um, Kochi is just like an Italian one, but it's, it's not red. It's, it's white. Um, I was actually adding in some uh, Peychaud's uh, and then a little bit of chartreuse. So this is actually a classic cocktail. Um, but what I did, I basically made a Manhattan and I, I think like lot 40 is, is the king whiskey of Manhattans. Um, old fashions, it punches through, but with a Manhattan, um, forget about it. And so what I did is because lot 40 is so balanced and so strong, I use a, like the, you normally use a red vermouth, which usually is pretty punchy and pretty strong. Yeah. Um, but just for fun, I use this, uh, this white vermouth, a little bit of chartreuse and some bitters. Um, and it turned out awesome. Um, yeah, like, I mean, but like lot 40 ain't like, honestly, What's the cocktail for Law 40? Any whiskey cocktail, use Law 40, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> might I suggest, guys, because I I, I I don't mind doing two whiskeys, one in each hand here. Uh, but I, I, I would I would say to the audience, let's try Lot 40, the what we just had, and then go to the Dark Oak. Okay, let's sure. jump. Let's jump. I'm already done mine. So we oh, have, okay. Yeah, Some people yeah, might be still sip, sipping the other one, but okay. uh, oh, we got more. Good news. Yeah, let's just have one okay, a bit of yeah. each. 
Yeah, because yeah. I think it's worth the worth the exercise if you go back and forth between the two. Right, if we have to. Yeah, it's to, to it's all in the name of science. That's right. Yeah. So this is the new bottle here, the Lot 40 Dark Oak. Why don't you uh, tell us about that? We might as well just jump to it a little bit here. So, so. so it's basically what you just had, okay? Yeah. That's why I suggest go back and forth. Is the last year of this this cool. one here with the dark oak, we put it in number four char barrels. So that's that's a heavily charred barrel in the Canadian whiskey world. I, I believe bourbon barrels will use that quite often, uh, but for the Canadian whiskeys, we usually like the softer softer number two char barrels. Uh, so we took it out of a new barrel, like Lot 40 is aged in a uh, number two. Uh, the last year of its life, we put it into a number four. We did pop the strength up to 48% as well. Uh, understanding that rye and wood characteristics will come out at higher strength. So there, there, forty-eight percent was not because I'm forty-eight years old today or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, there, there was method to the madness. There is, we certainly wanted to emphasize that wood, and certainly want to emphasize that. Uh, but I mean, you guys are nosing it. Yeah, it, it's just phenomenal. Honestly. Well, I got the like candied fruit was kind of the first thing that came to me, and then it was a. Even had a bit of this kind of like figgy thing going on. Then you nailed it. What was your comment? Oh, well, I mean, I kind of thought it had like some black currant kind of yeah, things to it, yeah. but also a little bit of like a like a dill note and which was kind of bourbony, which right? Is like, kind of kind of bourbony, but like there's a oh, and Quinn Palmer who know, there's it's something like you do notice the two side by side, and they're definitely noticeably different. But yep, yeah, they are. They should they, be. Yeah. So but I, they're they're you know they're family. I got a couple of dram clubbers online here who are tasting the same thing as us. And Quinn, Quinn Palmer, who is a dram club member, has brown butter is okay. what he's getting on it. And nice. Christine Daisy, who is a dram club member, is tasting along with us. It's very sweet and nice and nice. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I read that before. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mike's comment. Does Weiser's 15 year contain lot 40? No, I just put column distilled rye in, into it, not uh, pot distilled rye. Thanks. That's a great question, Mike. Yeah. So, yeah, no. But there is a fair bit of rye in the in the 15 year old in comparison in the Weiser's family. Good yeah. question. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading the questions down the side here. When I had this one, I had a honey note to it when I when I made my tasting notes on it. I don't know if I get get it today. As soon as you said black currant there, Trenny. Yeah. And black hair, yeah, yeah, hell, hell yeah. And uh, I, I, I made the overarching comment of tree fruits, like, 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 uh, yeah, or cherries, things like that, right? Yeah, dark sure. fruits, yeah, yeah. But there is, it's like a really good balance of this. Like, I think the rye is actually bringing out some of that the sweetness and the kind of like oh. bubble gum powder kind of. Yeah. Pack. So bubble gum is is get your horns ready. It's maltol. No, uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll get people say cotton candy or bubble gum a lot of times, and that's a, a very distinctive when you use a lot of new wood. Yeah. So since I've used new wood, the first fill and the second fill, you're, you're certainly going to get a lot of maltol. I think that's a great call out. And Joel Gossman, who's another uh, Dram Club member, he's tasting along. It has more of a molasses note than the standard one. Yeah, and molasses has that uh, smokiness to it. So there are yeah. guyacol in it and then some phenols that you'll, because of the wood, right? Oh. Uh, I had a great, great call, Joel. Uh, very good. Great call. Great call. I'm going to actually sip it finally. And I know, Dawn, you're... Uh, you're rearing to get a couple, a bit of a buzz tonight, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually enjoying going back and forth because I actually haven't even done that exercise myself. So uh, it's. Uh... And Mike Casera says that uh, I love the Wendell Clark. That explains a lot. So yeah, Wendell Clark does have a lot of the lot forty into it. Yeah, it's got yeah, a blend of column is still rye and pot is still rye in it too. So you know we uh we kind of I love these questions. It's a great form to to answer questions. I know we're not doing those brands tonight, but yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing that we really. Uh, it's really too bad that we're missing out on because of COVID is uh, we have a tiebreaker master blender challenge between yeah. C and I that we just can't do this year. So, Oh, I so know. I was thinking about that this afternoon, afternoon actually. <laughs> it's raining champion. It's, it's yeah. just carrying on. Yeah, I know. I was thinking about that this afternoon. The last time we actually had a live session uh, was you guys did the blending exercise and that's a lot of fun. Oh that's yeah. Classic. That's classic. 
Yeah. Hate to see what you would do with dark oak in your blend. Exactly. exactly. We got well, yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of new stuff that we can work with, right? Like, I mean, uh, the oh, options are endless now. Yeah. When will Alberta see dark oak? Uh, Jason, I don't know. I saw Ryan Egan mention something about it on Twitter. I don't know if you're on Twitter, Jason, or not, but uh, uh, I think he's in the uh, Total Wine and Beyond. Am I right, Colin? I think Ryan Egan's Total Wine yeah. and Beyond. Yeah, so I think yeah. they may have some, so you might want to check out their website, Jason. Yeah, I mean, for the for the first time ever in history, BC is getting a national release first. Yeah. <laughs> so let, yeah. let's cheers to that, cool. boys! Like, yeah. Yeah. Said, like yeah. about it. How unreal is that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to the dismay yeah. of the other provinces, but yeah, yeah. keep it flowing yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jason said, "Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Jason, for confirming. I, 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 I saw him that, but I'm not 100 percent when he's doing it or how. But uh, that's that's the only thing I know in Alberta, and hopefully we can get some more products in Alberta. Just keep asking your reps and and stuff. I don't have a lot to do with it. I know we pitch boards for things and and stuff, and if consumers are asking enough times." Uh, I'm sure they'll they'll listen, and uh, hopefully we can get them all across Canada. And, and I have great aspirations for this uh, dark oak. Well, I mean, just sipping on it now. We've had it yeah. a few times, and we've obviously given it out to our our uh, dram clubbers. But this, every time I come back to it, I just fingers crossed that it does well, and we're going to promote the hell out of it because, yeah, like I was as you were talking there, I was sipping, thinking, you know, this is forty eight percent alcohol, and it really, really suits it because sometimes, uh, you know, like a high rye content and a high ABV is not, doesn't necessarily co correlate, but it's so just, it works so well with mm -hmm. it. I love it. And yeah. uh, we've got a few more people joining here. We've got our buddy uh, Jeremy Sipper Social Clubs here. We also have uh, Michael Gomez saying hello from Arlington, Texas. So oh, we've People all all over the place joining us tonight. We got a good good crowd in the house tonight. So oh, that, that's awesome. Uh, I'm trying to read all the comments. It's going too quick down my screen. So somebody did ask the pricing on this. Uh, I know Ontario. It is fifty nine ninety five. Colin, is the price the same in British Columbia for the dark oak? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm almost positive. I mean, it hasn't hit the shelves here yet. The whole nature of this was to get it for these guys early. Um, <clears throat> but that, let me see if I can pull it up here. We got her here we, too. We've got the, uh, spirit release, which by the way is November 14th and it's all online this year, which is yeah. it, oh, wow. okay. kind of too bad. I got it here. Lot 40, uh, dark Oak is 59 99 right now. Yeah. Okay. 60 bucks. So it's, that's awesome. Yeah. But, but that's awesome right? And that's, um, but one thing I think that's going to, um, get a lot of the enthusiasts excited about it specifically is also the 48%. You know, it's always, you know, everybody, yeah. everybody's asking you for cast strength all the time, but I think 48% is that, uh, it's in that sweet spot, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. The, the, the problem is this, is when you're increasing the strength, and I don't know if consumers appreciate this or not, but it, it, the taxes will kill you. Oh. We're, right. we're, we're, we're killed on a liter of absolute alcohol when we're taxed, right? So when every time you pump up the strength, that, that gets put onto the consumer, right? Mm. Okay. I mean, I, even though it may be the same age or anything like that, as soon as you start popping up the strength on things, uh, the, the government wants more money. And then unfortunately it gets put onto to the consumer to pay the price. So it, it's one of those things where you think about with pricing and strength of alcohol and stuff, but I understand the people, that, Lot 40 is niche, right? It's a niche product. And, and I understand the consumer that will pick it up. Certainly strength of alcohol is an important attribute to them. Yeah, so there's there's no like loopholes around it where you can be like, no. you know, forty eight percent, but behaves like a forty percent. <laughs> yeah, no, no, there's no loophole. So. <laughs> you know, like I, I, I like, <laughs> like, like if I'm ever like on a dating profile or something, I always say like I'm five eight, but I identify as. <laughs> <laughs> I can't BS around strength, man. That that that's been uh, the, the, from the beginning of time. Well, that's where the word hey, proof comes. But from. he does right? walk tall. Leave it. <laughs> Something. Um, the, the word proof is where they lit it on fire and proved to me yeah. that it's strength. So, I mean, it's uh, so there is reasons for it. And uh, if you guys want higher strength, you got to pay more. But I mean, but yeah, it gives a different flavor profile too. And, and I get it. And something like this, 
yeah, let, let's get the strength. Hey, of the as long as, you know what, so far the pain more is worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I, I think so as well. And um, just to, to um, reiterate an uh, earlier comment for Rare Bird, who is saying, is there a cast strength wisers expression in the U.S.? If there is, I can't find it. Uh, you had just said that the cast yeah. strength is going to be where? It's there here now. Just, I mean, literally this week, Rare Bird 101. Go to hoteling, H-O-T-A-L-I-N-G.com. Those there are distributor for the lot forty, and they'll they'll be able to direct you to where the lot the lot forty cast strength is sold. Right. There's not a lot of bottles, Robert. I I hope you can get find a bottle, uh, but uh, there are distributing us, and hopefully if it goes well, which it, I, I think early indications say we'll we'll release more and more cast strength and more bottles uh, as the years go on. That, that's the aspiration. Wiser's uh, like twenty two. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Do you want to do that? Uh, we want to go switch. No, 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 be available in the U.S. Uh, the Wiser's twenty-two. No, no, that one is not in the U.S. But it's like lot. Oh, so yeah, excuse me, it might be available in the. Uh, yeah, you guys cut me on the spot. It might be there. <laughs> Don't worry. Will, uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah, it might be yeah. there. But you know what? It's um. The Corby lineup, right? Which the with the forty nine Wellington, which forty nine Wellington is no slouch. Like, let's talk about that for a quick second. We must have. Oh, it's behind those lot forties on the top. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, just because this one's going to the U.S., like this one is nineteen years old. There, you've got it right there. Nineteen years old and forty nine percent. Like, this is a no joke whiskey as well, right? I mean, and so. Like you guys are almost not on purpose, but I mean, everybody knows the situation with allocated bourbons in the U S and it's hard to find them. This is almost like the Canadian version of, of allocation, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So that one's going to the U S rare bird. You might want to find that one as well. Uh, 19 years old. It's like uh, phenomenal. I love playing with that one because it has a, a mixed grains to it. We're, we don't make mash bills in Canada. We, we do everything separately, but I put in rye malt, barley malt, wheat, uh, corn, uh, and rye in that one. So there's a lot of grains going on, aged 19 years. And uh, it's got a little bit of red letter in it. So you guys know what red, Canadians know what red letter is. Uh, it's a it's one of award winning in Canada. The one that everyone wants back. Yeah. That yeah, we never we, get to try. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned on that. Um, oh, anyway. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, so it's got some red letter into the blend. There's lots going on. If you can find the the this one, it's a, just a gorgeous whiskey. Actually, a, a big component of it is it's aged in rum barrels, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, because we – and the reason why I put some rum barrel into it because it gives them that sweetness to it, like you guys would recognize that in Pike Creek. Uh, yeah. Yes. But uh, the other thing why is we wanted the theme red on it. And I put red oak into the blend. And red oak is very tannic. Mm. It's very oh, drying. So I needed to balance out with yeah, the, we, know the tannin. Tannin. <laughs> we know tannins. We know tannins. Tannic is that dry impression, right? So I needed yeah. to put some of that rum barrel into it. So there's a lot going on that whiskey. And I'd encourage uh, Rare Bird 101 maybe to, to look up for that that one as well. It's it's a court. If you're a bird, look, I'm thinking Rare Bird 101, you're a bourbon drinker. Yeah, that's what you want to go to. He's, he literally wrote a book about uh, about wild or wild turkey. So yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> I, I'd be very curious in your comments if you can find a bottle for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bringing up the uh, forty nine Wellington and some of these other whiskeys um, have been been a part of the Northern Border collection over the last couple of years, which is becoming more and more like a sought after collection in. in Canadian whiskey yeah. world. So we're kind of just curious as to it's it's like a bit of a we're halfway we, there. We paused this year. Uh, I yeah. think with all the all the COVID situations and stuff going on, a lot of the boards were not taking or they were going to delay it. That's why Ontario is oh. a little bit delayed this year. And we just said, you know what, let's just pause, recalibrate. And I've I've been doing some whiskey tastings with some lot forty prototypes with people and. Uh, uh, some wisest prototypes of people, and I we're just trying to gauge what the next year's Northern Border collection is going to be around. Yeah. It's just I'm we're just we just paused, uh, and I think we'll we'll see some good stuff coming next fall. I know we will. Just seeing awesome. some some feedback. I'm waiting for somebody who sat in one of my tastings that I've done some uh, some consumer tastings with because we've done some really really cool stuff, uh, and then I think I, I'm excited with Lot Forty and some of the other brands as well. 
Cool. No, I mean, honestly, just just having the lot 40 dark and uh, the 22 year old wisers is. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, it's, it's a good for this situation. And it, oh. it's just difficult to get in front of boards, to be honest with you, to, yeah. to start presenting stuff and, and distributing it. And it, it's it's chaotic. And I and I hope everyone's staying safe out there. I really, really do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as as we all know, things are kind of starting to get wacky again so mm -hmm. yeah yeah hey but, that's why we do this this is great this is exactly great. yeah if, if we can't uh, do it in person this is at least pretty fun so <laughs> can we talk, can we talk just for a quick second on about the um the hand sanitizer you guys were distilling for a while wow. yeah so in the next room I, i'm not gonna go grab it, but yeah uh <laughs> for a change i'm making somebody else's recipe yeah okay <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're doing uh, the the World Health Organization's recipe for uh, hand sanitizer. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, potent stuff, 70% alcohol and a bunch of other stuff. And we donated it to the Ontario uh, Medical Association and uh, and local uh, like uh, uh, senior homes and hospitals and things like that. Uh, it was a little bit chaotic at first, but it, it, it was such a great program. It got such great feedback. Our, the sister company, which I'm responsible for as well with Blends, which is Fort Smith, Arkansas, where they do Kahlua and Seagram's Gin and things like that. Uh, oh. We made some hand sanitizer for the U.S. market and for Pernod Ricard USA. And uh, there's been great accolades coming out of that facility as well. So, yeah, I, I don't only do Canadian whiskey, guys. I do gin yeah. and, and, and stuff. I'm sure it tastes well. delicious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting well, for your Kahlua episode here. <laughs> well, you know what? You, in what I do for my work, I'm you ready. Turn away people that have been drinking, and now you just can't tell because everyone just smells like alcohol. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I swear, my hands. But no, uh, thank you for doing that. I mean, that's yeah. a, that's amazing work, and um, you know, especially you know when you guys kind of kicked it off and uh, last year, and things were going crazy, so. Uh, it's important to give back. It's yeah. really important to give it, back. Well, yeah. It's actually very cool that, um, you know, a lot of the local distilleries that are very small kind of craft distilleries mm -hmm. around here, it instantly gave them a boost too because they're in large part donating yeah. half of their product to hospitals. Yeah. Colin, I don't think our product made it out to BC. I don't think did the JP Weiser's hand sanitizer get out there. <laughs> Not that I know of, no. no. I don't think it did. And certainly not commercially or anything like that. No. no I, but that's, it, uh, that's kind of the beauty of it. it it's not about uh, uh, selling or yeah. becoming like a product. It's just helping people out, really. Yeah, then that, that, that is absolutely great. So Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna um, make it good, yeah. Are we going to pivot to another brand here? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's get to the Pike Creek. Come on. Let's oh, okay. Pike Creek. <clears throat> Do you have one? Of, does everybody have one of those on hand? Colin, you got one of those on hand? I do. Perfect. I do. I open another bottle. Oh, yeah. I my uh, half right. bottles in the other room, but I'll open this one here. That's fine. I'm also particularly uh, excited about this one because this was an exclusive in Ontario. So um, I didn't get to play with this when uh, when it came out, right? So is this yeah. your first time having it, Colin, or have you had it? It is, yeah, yeah. I, I um, I've actually just, I mean, there's a little lost here. I, I did a little uh, tasting with somebody else, um, where I was driving into town, so I didn't drink. But um, I'm <laughs> very anxiously uh, awaiting this, and I know I can't wait to hear your story, Don. I know I, I think I know a little bit about it, but I want to hear what you say about it. I don't know if my lighting's quite good. But there's, a story. there's a story. We want to hear a story. Um, so Corby Distilleries, which is our, our marketing and sales side. Uh, uh, company uh, went and bought a winery. It's called Foreign Affair Winery. It's uh, very well known in the Ontario. I'm not sure if you get the wine out in British Columbia, but certainly Ontarians know it. And as soon as they joined the company, the master, or the, it's called a master, it's a, the winemaker for uh, Foreign Affair says, you know what? I want to visit your Dr. Don, uh, pick your brain. I want to know a little bit more about whiskey. He had little time to kill. He went through the distillery, did a blending 101 with me. Um, and, uh, he, uh, says, well, you know what, have, have you, uh, would you want to do a barrel exchange? Cool. So what happens when you get a winemaker and a master blender together? You talk <laughs> shop. We, we actually exchanged some barrels and I initially put it away in a 2006, uh, barrels and see how it went. But man, I, I, I kept using it. My, if anyone out here can go to one of my blending one ones when things start up again, please do. I send, send out 140 samples. You come and blend your own whiskey with Dr. Don. It's a great cool. time. 
Uh, so I was starting to play with this with, with people in the audience. This is really fantastic. So we kind of went back and forth and said, do we want to release a brand together? So he released his wine that was aged in Pike Creek barrels. Mm. And I released the whiskey aged in the foreign mm. affair barrels at the same time. Very cool. By and the way, Don, we, we've got the uh, foreign affair conspiracy and the foreign affair dream here in BC. The two oh, red. okay, great. So, yeah, okay, just so great. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what it was those ones in particular. They were the Cabernet. Are they Cabernet? <clears throat> Uh, I think they're blends here. Do the 26, 2016 vintage, um, but uh, but yeah, good good. Yeah, maybe something in that. But anyway, we we did the Cabernet and and then we redid his again because we want to release the whiskey that the year the Foreign Affair Winery started, which was two thousand and four. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. So this had the two thousand and four, and it ended up being a fifteen year old whiskey. And the feedback, this thing sold so quickly. I was just like, I, oh my God, I, I could not believe how quickly people took this up in Ontario. And it was, it was such a fantastic project and caught us off guard a little bit. So I'm now well, thinking, do we need to do a few more of these barrels? And uh, uh, I've been emailing them actually this week, say, can we get some more barrels and maybe we can do something more again? Yeah, I mean, honestly, just my personal taste and opinion, this is my favorite Pike Creek out of out No of kidding, all. really. Yeah, I love that. And one. I actually, I totally agree with that statement. And that's, and, and, and Pike Creek's no slouch. I mean, 21 year old, uh, uh, whiskey of the year, Canadian yeah. whiskey of the year last year. I mean, and to me, this is my personal favorite as well. It's so, a contender. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, early contender for yeah. Trendy and C whiskey of the year, early Which contender. Is probably a bigger prize. It's a big, <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. And this was just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine what you could do if you focused. Yeah. Focus a little, Don. <laughs> Joel asked me, do I work under the distillery? Of course, every day. I, I've been going in uh, all the time, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, so have, have things slowed down for you personally? No, no, no. no? I, I was working from home, and there were, like, I, fortunately, I had five minutes from the distillery, and I was picking up samples, trying to do tasting at home, trying to avoid the staff a little bit. It just wasn't working out. I've been going to work probably now for the last couple of months. Just, just yeah. you, you got to start, start, keep going. That's so. Well, I, I mean, we, we put our masks on. We heat check yeah. ourselves going into work and stuff. I think COVID's been pretty good for liquor sales. So you're gonna yeah. stay busy. <laughs> oh, it, it's the big jugs people are buying. The one seven fives, right? The one seven fives. If anything, you're probably like the safest guy to be around because you're constantly covered in sixty five percent. Yeah, yeah, you're safe. <laughs> no, we know it's our spirits. I don't go around uh, like you that. Over day. What's up? <laughs> 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 oh man! No, awesome. Yeah, Joel says I. I hope you can come and visit us. I would encourage your audience who are, are still tuned in come and visit me and. Uh, I love to get those blending one on one start up again and trying and see. Hopefully, we can get you guys to the distillery as well. We would love seriously, it. Seriously, seriously, I line up 140 different things, and you could come in and make your own blend. That's so cool. The training C exclusive Ooh, blend. That would be where the real blend championship would be. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that, that where would be. I mean, honestly, we and there's that. That's the fun part about what we're doing, and I, I think that is a pillar uh, of what we want to do is. Uh, educate people what Canadian whiskey is. And I think that's lacking in our industry. Yeah, it's, it's getting people involved and knowledgeable and excited about it. I think honestly, though, from, you know, the perspective of whiskey enthusiasts, like this lot 40 is like a single malt scotch to people, you know, it's, it, it's, that's a great analogy. I can't really describe it. But I think it, that is really catching on worldwide. Yeah. And I know Colin has brought some, yeah, I know you've brought some customers, uh, the, some bartenders and stuff to, to, to do some blending one-on-one with me. And yeah. What, what is their feedback? <clears throat> I mean, I, I joined Corby just when that uh, brand center was firming up. So, I mean, it always kind of been there, right? But the, how much has transformed, like from when you walk in that door, uh, you walk uh, and then you walk back to your blending class area there, Don, like, um, you know, and having you there, <laughs> it's like, you know, like most people are expecting like a hologram or, you know, and I know we have some other people running who are very qualified, but just a chance to have you there as well yeah. is unreal. And, and like people like walk out of there, like they just left Disneyland. Like it's, if you like whiskey, it's, it's like, you know, like 
pretty much the epitome. Um, cause it's not like, you know, it's not like a, like a, like a, you know, I use the word, word Disneyland, but like, it's not like a tour like that where we, you know, we walk you through a carousel and you see a bunch of stills that aren't actually in operation. Like you get to yeah. see real stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's the most authentic tour I've personally ever been on my, my, in my life. Um, but one day you got to get the animatronic Dr. Don. In yeah. There. A- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> No, but everybody at the distillery, when you, if you guys come and visit, they're very personable. They understand uh, that people are very passionate about what they do. And I think the, the thing here tonight, I'm reading all the comments. Please throw out your comments. What kind of things do you want me to work on? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm listening here as, as what do you want to see for Canadian whiskey? <laughs> and uh, you got the right person in the audience right now to, to, to listen. And I think that's one of the things with a master blender is we, we don't talk enough to consumers. Right, Don. I saw I saw a request come through, Don, for a 1.75 liter of the 22 year old. Oh, so, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, if we, we talked about taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought we went over this. Um, can I put? Oh, you. Got this. No, I was going to say like we we. I like it. This whiskey, but we haven't actually knows there or anything, and it's. I want our uh, our dram clubbers that are tasting this along with us. Yeah. To give us some feedback on this pipe. Cream. And when we're when we're done uh, doing some nosing and tasting notes, I'd like Colin to give us maybe a Pike Creek cocktail. So let's, uh, oh, yeah. let's nose it and taste it a little bit here. Um, cool. Amir, Amir, quite a while back in the comments here, had said that he smelled balloons on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe a little late latex. Yeah, we well, got okay. balloons. What do you like? Okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> We just so happen to have uh, the, these are the, these balloons are a little bit off putting actually. I, yeah, I mean, they're, I they are dollar these, store versions. These are dollar store balloons. He, he must be smelling high uh, high price high balloons. Yeah, high high I, I, it, it, it is very ripe fruit to me. I mean, like a Bing cherry. Yeah, I it, like it. It's, I mean, I think for me, what it is is like the age. Honestly, I know we've you we <laughs> we you've put out the twenty one year old. <laughs> Um, but for, for me, just, this is the perfect, I don't know if it's the balance of this, the wine casks in there or what it is, but something about this one, the 15 year old shines to me. Like there's, there was, there's a certain maturity to it. I'll yeah. throw, some, throw something out there too. Um, so foreign affair winery is very famous for using an apasamento style. Um, if you don't know what that is when you're making wine, it's like that uh, Amarone thing where they dry the grapes out to concentrate the fruit. So it's like, you know, they raisin, raisinate the groups, the grapes, right. right? And I think that comes through in this. I think that's something that maybe you're picking up is right. like that raisinated kind of like, you know, not. Um, so bananas maybe. Yeah. yeah. I actually For have. For me, that kind of jumps out a little bit. Yeah. And I, when I did, I wrote down some tasting notes and, and uh, like one of the nosing notes that it had was like a almost like a sour grape kind of a nose to it. Like it, it even wow. shows up on the nose. Like it's, it's just really, but it's nice and uh, and soft too. And like that's yeah, gorgeous. Brown sugars in there. I, I think honestly, and like the, a vanilla the, thing. The too. word that comes to my mind is just is balanced. Like it's so yeah. There's it doesn't go one way or the other. It's yeah kind of. <laughs> I think this whiskey to me is about a, a particular occasion though. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know if it's an after dinner drink, <laughs> relaxing at night kind of stuff. I don't think it, I don't know. You talked about cocktailing. I personally, I don't know if I, how, how what, what would you put in a cocktail with this one? It just seems like a nice sipper on a nice yeah. occasion, relaxing. Who is the guy? Uh, one ounce in a glass. That's the cocktail. Right? Yeah, we <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. I mean, when it out, maybe just put a little bit of a uh, soda water in there to make it bubbly in your set. Yeah. But maybe that's it. Don't, don't overthink it. Yeah. yeah. Don't overthink it. <clears throat> I, I, I certainly would like for cocktailing. I, I would definitely stick to that, especially on this one. Um, I mean, grab the 10 year old, you know, rum barrel finished Pike Creek, which we have on the shelves, uh, put some agave nectar fruit bitters with it and, uh, and make like a Caribbean old fashioned, you mm-hmm. know, like that celebrating the rum characteristics that are around it. I even like with that one, I'll just take a, a piece of, of pineapple, muddle it in the bottom of the glass, put the ice mm-hmm. in, make my old fashioned with agave nectar. If you don't know what that is like agave yeah. nectar is like the uh, maple syrup of the tequila, you know, uh, <clears throat> 
uh, yeah. region. Um, but but yeah, and then fruit bitters and but for this, oh man, like I, I almost like don't want to be that pretentious guy. But like, isn't it a waste to like make a cocktail out of this? Yeah. You know, like it's it's so. I, I, I don't think overthink this one to be honest with a cocktail. Yeah. I, I, I saw yeah. the previous comment from uh, somebody who liked the Speyside uh, Pike Creek. Yeah. Hint, was it Ian? Hint, yeah. hint, 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 Ian. Uh, you might like red letter. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, you can't find <laughs> red letter <laughs> anywhere. Hint, 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 Ian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We shall take the hint. Um, we've got lots of boy, pe people uh, joining. Whoa, the, uh, the, <laughs> the Lot 40 Dark Oak is kicking in. Um, <laughs> lots of people joining us here. We are, uh, we are at epic numbers here for our viewership, so this is great. Yeah. So, um, again, if you didn't already know, uh, it's Dr. Don's birthday today. We are going through the Dram Club lineup, which is sponsored by uh, Mr. Colin McDougal at the bottom here. Uh, and at the bottom of your screen, not, you're not below anyone, but you're just at the bottom of the screen. And people might see it differently than we do. Yeah, that's oh, happened before. Okay. Too. So yeah. never mind. He's, just, he's that guy there. So um, what about uh, should we check in on some Instagram followers? Uh, Colin, what's your Instagram? Yeah, you know, I, I feel really dumb for not putting it up like Don did there. Uh, but mine's uh, mine's really easy. It's just oh, at at corby.colin so c-o-r-b-y dot c-o-l-i-n um yeah so nice and nice and simple and yeah and i i try to keep people updated especially here in bc on uh you know promotions things that come out um and I, i've responded to a lot of real time like you know with direct messages and instagram mm -hmm. um it, it, it might as well might as well be like yeah. like whatsapp like i get so many questions come through so anybody that has them i super encourage them and to be honest when i don't know stuff i just ask don and then so you, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm now i know middle, why man. i get a lot of direct messages <laughs> <laughs> uh, this guy over thank here. you everybody the happy birthday there's some people have joined later but try uh, to be the next I, I only have nine more minutes left of my birthday at least on on Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, that's right. And then, so uh, you can see Dr. Don's uh, Instagram. He's got it right there, uh, at CDN Whiskey Doc. So if you can follow these two uh, uh, gentlemen, that'd be fantastic. And you can get all your updates on uh, everything wisery. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Uh, you guys uh, coined that term, wisery. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like because trademark. It's, there's not, I, can't, I can't put my finger on what it is, but... <laughs> I yeah. know it when I smell it or taste it. And yeah. I of course. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's a hump That's a good segue to get a little bit wisery. Yeah. I got to find another glass here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So, oh, baby. Um, we've got. Uh, do, you have, do you have those last two glasses? I have one have? here for me. We're oh. going to go to the 22 year? What's that one there? Is that fresh or soiled? Have you soiled that one? I think we're, we're doing the 22, eh, boys? 22? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we've got the 22-year-old. This is bottled at 59.7. Is there an Easter egg to that? No. No? <laughs> that, that, that's what it comes in at. So uh, why don't we do cast strengths? I can't control an Easter egg for that sort of thing. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So um, the 22 is the same recipe as the 23, correct? Yes, but there's one difference. The, the port. Port with the last uh, it's eleven months, almost a year in a port cask. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that's really the only difference between the twenty three. So if anyone has the twenty three, uh, yeah, we have one back here. We've got one right here. There. Oh, Colin's gone down there too. Yeah, uh, you guys can open it. I've I've had it many times. Yeah, you hold um, same recipe. It'd be a good side to side if if people in the audience does have them, you'll exactly know what port casks would do to a whiskey. And yeah. look at the color too. I mean, you might have to get higher, but hold on. Yeah, I didn't add it. There's no caramel coloring. I mean, that's it is what it is. So there's no coloring in these ones. No. Yeah, look how look how red and uh, strawberry that 22 is. Hey? That just shows you how much port has actually come into that whiskey, right? Yeah, that's very. Good. And in one year is not going to make it at that age. It's not going to make any color difference at that point. So I mean, it, it, they're essentially the same whiskey. Uh, same rye level, uh, just the only difference is aged in a port cask for your, for 11 months, a year. And, and uh, uh, obviously, like you said, can't control, but different percentage of alcohol. Yeah. 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 Tawny, tawny port too. Okay. And anybody that uh, didn't 
watch our whiskeys of the year video you should but we'll give you a little sneak preview uh the wiser's 23 was one of our whiskeys of the year last year so yeah um the Amazing 20 easing stuff and like that's the 22 wasn't eligible yet so the 22 will be eligible this coming year for yeah. whiskeys of the year so we'll We'll see how it fares, but it's certainly a... And, and we will talk about this one in a sec. I just want to add something to that because mm. for me, and we talk about it in the Whiskey of the Year video, but for me, anytime it was either like the beginning of the night or the end of the night or, and it was kind of, you know, bit, just hanging yeah. out. Yeah. Um, Casual time. I, I came back to that 23-year-old every single time. Like he did. Like, give me something between 22 and 24 years old. <laughs> Canadian, yeah. Canadian, around 64%. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked me the difference between port and sherry. Uh, the gr uh, great example, if you go to the Pike Creek uh, in Oloroso sherry casks and the, compare this one to that as well. I know they're different strengths. I just find uh, the sherry casks to be a little more of a dry fruit. This is more of a, a brighter fruit to me, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, in well, port casks. Yeah. That's my personal good. opinion. I'm taking yeah. for what take. Whiny grapey, yeah, Jason's making kind of the same same comment. You know what? I even got something a little bit of that, uh, like nutmeg and uh, yeah, sweet, like a sweet soft spice to it. For some reason, I get a high lots of vanilla at the moment. I yeah, definitely sure. vanilla for yeah, sure. sure. On there. For whatever reason, this time of night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, it's funny you laugh because I do tasting notes different times of day, and they're different, right? Oh, yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had bottles where I, open, you know, I'll taste it and like, ah, oh, just maybe this batch is off or something. And then, you know, a day later I'll come back to it and it's just that I was off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a great even, point. Yeah. And even like, you know, you, you open it up, you put it in there, you take, you know, some, some nosing notes and then you wait five minutes and you go back and then you go between some whiskeys and it's like, it's, it's kind of ever evolving, you know? Yeah. Yeah, oh, totally. And and if Don, Donald agrees with you there. He likes the 23 year. Try yeah. the 22 if Donald, if, you, if you're not part of the club here, but if you can pick up a bottle of the 22, I'd be curious on what your feedback would be. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's delicious. <laughs> the 23 was one of the greatest Christmas gifts I ever received. <laughs> you, wait, till the, wait till this Christmas, yeah, Donald. There you go. Ew. That's right. And so the 22 is released where right now, Don? Uh, BC. Is it only BC right now? Yeah, and then somebody had made the comment today. We we we're releasing the 22 year in Ontario in February. We have to wait for the LCBO. Uh, they did give us permission for a real tiny tiny release today, and through our brand center. I know somebody somebody was complaining earlier. Uh, I apologize on that. We we released uh, um, 48 bottles was all we could could sell through our brand center. That's all they would allow. And it sold out in like three minutes. Yeah, I mean, you can't control Big Brother. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I'd love to sell you every bottle I can have. It's coming. Be patient. Find a friend that may have it in Ontario. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, we do have to work with, and I mean, we, we have a great relationship with with working with these liquor boards. They they got yeah. great insight and everything. It's just they they time things just for specific reasons, and uh, we were just thankful they were allowed us because some people were asking for us for for the holidays and we gave an opportunity that you can buy it so yeah so this is a good question actually like from jason fisk and he, yeah, he if there's any backs off of the 23 year old but more specifically like on a general note like a lot of these releases from the northern border collection they're like one and done right like if you they're don't want it the 23 is one and done there's still some left uh, Jason, I don't know if you're in Ontario. Find a friend in Ontario. If you don't have it, we still some ha has, have some at our brand center. So go to jpwiserstour.ca. Uh, and they, they can only ship it to Ontario addresses. I know there's some there. I There may be some in other provinces. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Colin, do you know if there's any 23 left in BC? Yeah, there's some kicking around still. There's some like kicking it, around, okay. It, it, um, yeah, it didn't completely um, get bought so, out right yeah. away. There's yeah. one bottle. Trenny saw it. There's I one bottle there in one BC. I saw it yesterday, in B actually. Don't tell anyone where it is. I We're going to get it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are bottles kicking around, but what what's left is left. Uh, I I know there's a few cases left back in our brand center. So if you, if you want to order it on JPWiserStore.ca, again, we got to go to an Ontario address. 
Um, and then and now the 22 year is going to take its over. And, uh, and then uh, I do know what's coming the next fall. I can't really tip my hand yet, but uh, uh, there's there's another highly aged wisers that'll that'll come out. Uh, is, there, is there any is there any more Union Fifty Two coming out? No, no. Um, but but I know I'll tip my hand because I've done tastings on it. Uh, I I understand the smoky flavor is what people are looking for in whiskey. Well, we've done uh, some some consumer tastings with the Toronto Whiskey Society and the Alberta Scotch uh, Society as well uh, of a lot forty age and a peated quarter cask. Oh, interesting! Damn. Lot forty and a peated quarter cask. Whoa, that totally that goes kind of to the point I was talking about where single malt yeah. fans could really get into like the lot forties and it's like what can't lot know, forty do? Lot forty. So, uh, so likewise, I've done some wiser brands in some peated quarter casks as well. No plans as of yet, but I mean, it's there. So if you want a smoking style, uh, a wiser brand like a Union 52, the ability is there now. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's just it's just when and how. And we, I, I got, there's so many things I can do. <laughs> and so you can only put one thing at a time, right? That, yeah. that's, that, that's, the, that's the thing, right? Yeah. If, I could, if I could say... Uh, too like i think sometimes um yeah, like when you see a unicorn you don't realize it's a unicorn yeah totally you know and like and these these whiskeys i mean don i've been with the company since 2016 the whiskeys that you have released like these limited edition ones they like come through and stuff like the union 52 i just joined back then mm. like you know it kind of just hit the shelves bc exclusive there was a little bit of a buzz um i did a tasting and a guy went out and bought 60 bottles of it one guy did so their whole group um it was the uh uh, West Coast, like the Richmond Cigar Club, these guys are nuts. But, but like, <laughs> but I, I just think it goes to show you, like, and we're talking about these limited releases. Like, um, if you like these, if you think these are cool, they're not going to stick around. So go, go grab a couple. Like, you know, it's because yep. um, it, it's always kind of like, ah, should have, should have picked one up. Well, and it and so, they, sounds like a brand pitch, but it, it's true. The Union Fifty Two was like sixty nine dollars too, or fifty nine. It was ridiculous. Fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Ridiculous. It's <laughs> crazy. It was after our BC Spirit release where we yeah. got everything we wanted. And then that one was kind of sticking around in the store that I go to. And I was like, ah, I might as well get it. And then we tried it. It was, it was like, like, okay. That became yeah. my whiskey of the year that year. Yeah, that was and, whiskey of the year. And we went out and bought the remaining bottles in the store, yeah. which wasn't many. But uh, it, was fantastic. You know, it, it is true. It's the unicorn kind of thing. And you don't necessarily know it until... I'm, I'm not actually, I really haven't had a chance to sit down with this on a relaxed session like we are here, but I'm really enjoying this one, actually. Well, you, yeah, you know what? This 22-year-old this amazing. 22 year old has um, Unreal. more than mouthfeel. It has like a mouth presence. Like it's it's alive and it's yes. tingly and it's it's yeah. like, it really, it's alive in your mouth, which is so fun. Well, I think, it's, you know, when you have the, the nose, which all those notes we talked about, like there's cloves in there. You mentioned vanilla and just a little bit fruity and mm -hmm. it's got some kind of candy aspects to it. But then, yeah, as soon as you sip it, it's, it, like, it, it's the 59 point whatever percent, seven. seven percent, it's not hiding on you anymore, you know? <laughs> But it's full. I, I, I got to point out Derek's comment there. He he's had the Dave Keon. We could go with the JP Weiser's uh, uh, alumni series. I'm with you, Derek. That Dave Keon is my favorite one out of the uh, uh, of the JP Weiser's alumni. Oh, it was, and he's a he was an interesting man when he came to the distillery. Man, he he came in and he says, "I like 18 year old McAllen. Can you make me an 18 year old?" <laughs> no, Dave, I can't do that. But I said, but I kind of made a blend to try to target that for him, and I think it turned out great. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm mean, reading the comments of everybody's putting every brand that we make here, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Derek, on on that comment for sure. Yeah. Anyway, I'm enjoying the 22 year in a casual setting. Happy birthday! My birthday's over now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, yeah, it's officially over. Yeah. Yeah. It's st it's still alive over here, Don. It's still going. Oh, yeah, you're good for three hours here. <laughs> we gotta Done. make the, the birthday birthday an, an annual thing guys i don't know well let's do it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're in. this covid sticks around and we'll have to do it like this <laughs> no, no kidding we will yeah for sure we'll um, be in the same spot next year 
we can't forget. We have to give away some bottles. Oh, tonight. we got to do that. Uh, yes, let's yeah. give away one bottle right now. Okay, let's let's uh, do the first one. Okay, one rule about giving away the bottles is we use the randomizer app. Um, the same person cannot win both bottles. I got to throw that out there right now. If you win both bottles, you get to choose which one you want. But uh, we got to spread the love around here. So we got to so, make sure we have the list because some of these people yeah. have like 20 numbers to their yeah. name. So let's it's, it's kind of like a lotto sort of scenario. Okay. So let's yeah. look here. So we have numbers between. First, we're giving away the uh, original. Yeah. Um, lot 40, 100% rye, rye whiskey, copper pot distilled, bottled at 43%, which fits perfectly with this one. Um, yeah. Okay, it's, so we are doing numbers between 1 and 322. Uh, so we did this recently. Only a, We gave away a free bottle two weeks ago. Yeah. So here we are again. We've got the randomizer app. It's called Pretty Random is the app. And uh, what we do, excuse the glare, is we have the numbers 1 and 322 on there. And I will press the button and it will choose a number. So we will, we are not going to do any kind of like practice. We're going straight at it. Maybe answer this first. Oh. So how, how do you get a number? How do you get into the lottery? You have to, we have, you have to be a member of our Patreon. Uh, okay. So right, go. Good. Go to our Patreon, become a member there, and you will be included in the next lottery bottle here. So, okay, pretty random. Let me close this here if I can. Let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, here we go. And totally random. Here we go. 315. Number 315, you are the winner. Let's see. If you are watching right now, comment and let us know that you're the winner, even though I guess everyone's going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um. This is a first time winner. Yes. This I a, love when this happens. This is a long time patron member, first time winner, Jared Keppelman. Oh. Uh, he is a $5 patron. And uh, congratulations. You are the very first winner, Jared. Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful bottle of Lot 40, 100% rye. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Do we have? Do we remember that? Did we write that down somewhere? I can always. We can always rewatch this. this I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're at one hour six minutes. So yeah, that's <laughs> right. One hour and six minute mark. We'll rewatch it. Okay, good. Um, so should we wait on that another few minutes? Okay, we'll wait a couple minutes to build the suspense of the giving dark away oak. the lot. Oh, dark yeah. oak. That's yeah. next. Yes. Very cool. Oh, yeah. So. <clears throat> Um, getting back to Wiser's 22, I just read a comment up here. Uh, oh, well, it's not even a, this isn't even really a fair question, but is it good? Yeah. <laughs> <Is> it good? <laughs> That's the kind of question. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's really effing good. It's really, really, really good. Um, I, I agree. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's delicious. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and like you said, you get to actually drink it in a casual setting where it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, I'm. It's like eight in the morning and stuff like that yeah. at, at a lab with a lab coat on. But uh, eleven yeah. at night. And it, it, it's something I do actually do. If you're, if if I'm really think I'm close in on something, I will bring some product home and try it sitting in a lazy boy watching the news at ten o'clock at night. And there you uh, go. It, it is a different feeling, and I do understand that's a big occasion to people. Um, yeah. But this to me doesn't taste like fifty nine seven. No. Yeah. Oh no. But the only way you get the fifty nine seven is that that nice tingle and presence on the back of your tongue. That's like that's where it comes alive. Yeah, it's, you know? it's very lively. But it's not like <coughs> that kind of fifty nine seven. It's not. But I, but I have the advantage of trying fifty nine seven other stuff. Right. True. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't taste like fifty nine seven. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and, and that and that that port, that port just rounds it. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I'd be very interested how this one will do in the Canadian Whiskey Awards. I don't know if Davin's on tonight, but uh, I'd be very interested in how this one may may do in, in the award ceremony. I'm yeah. guessing yeah. very well. Oh, for sure. I'm guessing well. Um, Colin, dare I ask if you would throw this into a cocktail? <laughs> I mean, we're yeah. we're in we're in that realm again, right. Of, of spirits that are just so good on their own. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty, 
that's pretty rough. But I mean, if you want to make like, so obviously you're not going to throw it with some pineapple juice and like, you know, like, or, or with, would you put in a Manhattan? No, zero. Yeah. I would say Manhattan, but like I like a Manhattan, it's gonna it's gonna sing through. Do a three to one ratio so that there's more whiskey than vermouth. Yeah. Um. So like American style. Yeah, you'd want to hold um, pull back the ver vermouth. I would. Yeah. Big yeah. time, big time. Or if you're doing, if you want to keep it Canadian, you get two ounces of Weiser's uh, twenty two. Um. Uh. You know what you could do too? Like just let let, let all the flavors play. If you've got some tawny port at home port in your glass mm -hmm. uh rinse it around like you would right oh. um so do port do a port rinse like a tawny port rinse and really mm -hmm. just like bring it out even another level oh. um for sure yeah like this this would do great and and like with an old-fashioned i mean two dashes of bitters not like when you're when you're working with a rougher spirit you add more bitters because you're trying to hide some stuff this is like man just just put like a a windbreaker on it not like a winter coat you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like keep it keep it simple I, what I a, see, uh, so, sorry, I'm looking at some of the comments. Uh, <laughs> I had some Weiser's 11, or the Lot 40 11 year. That's great. Uh, that's a beautiful whiskey. And then oh, I said, boy. somebody asked me for a, Joel's asking for a Mezcal. I, I, Joel, I've done a tequila with it and it just seemed wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe it's me, but I, I, I know it's not quite Mezcal, but I just, oh gosh, I just, just seemed wrong. Don, have you done anything that, like, be, okay, beyond the tequila, have you, have you tried either distilling something or finishing something that was just bizarre or wild or just that? Yeah, there's some mistakes I made. Uh, I've, I've aged in beer barrels before because I know beer barrel finished stuff and things like that. Yeah. The, the advice I'd give if there's any distillers on, on the earth here or blenders is if you're going to uh, finish your whiskey in a beer barrel. Just make sure the beer that's been in that barrel is fresh. Right. Don't let the don't let the barrel sit around because oh, you get you, you get the, uh, the frat boy party taste. Oh, yeah, I like the stale beer taste. Yeah, I, I think you'd have to really make sure you, you dump the beer from the barrel and immediately put your whiskey in it. Don't let yeah. the beer go stale. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's yeah. kind of the mistake. That's kind of the mistake I think I've made with those things, and I've I actually had to redistill it and just make vodka from it. But <laughs> that's one of my favorite stories. Actually, just sitting down with you is the fact that like Union Fifty Two, which is like one of our favorite whiskeys of all time, yeah. was almost um was almost polar ice vodka. Yeah, it was. I mean, my boss at the time was going through our inventory and said, "Why are we letting this this." evaporate away <laughs> and, and and you drink it it was undrinkable it really was undrinkable because it was so concentrated after 52 years of aging uh and i said let me play with it and i actually blended it out at a four percent level of of the 52 year old scotch and it ended up being perfect yeah that's almost one in 20 uh, which was which, which kind of worked out honestly and uh yeah. one of the best whiskeys i've ever made it's my top five it's my top five that we've made and that, that, and that's the interesting thing. I don't know if everyone knows that Union Fifty Two has fifty-two year old Scotch in it that you had aging in your warehouse. Yeah. Uh, and, and you well, they used to blend, you, well, there's the nine oh nine rule of Canadian whiskey, right? Yeah. yeah. We're allowed to blend in nine point zero nine percent two year old spirit or wine. Yeah. Right. So that's by law, which to me those are expensive ingredients. My supply management guy wants to strangle my neck because they're expensive. Hey, let's put mezcal in it. We know how expensive mezcal is. It's yeah. very expensive to buy. So if you're going to go down that road of just directly putting in mezcal, it's probably not a cost-effective way of going. Yeah. But you can put in wine directly. The whiskeys we had tonight, I didn't directly add port, or I didn't directly add or add the wine from Foreign yeah. Affairs. I didn't do that. It's directly aged in those barrels. It was authentic. Uh, but you can do that if you want to to do that and, and i don't think there's anything wrong with it it's just another paint on my painter's palette of blending whiskey um but that's why we had scotch in our warehouse in the first place we had whiskeys years and years and years ago that were, were buying scotch from scotland to put into the 909 into blends and some of those brands just went away and we just sat there sat there sat there for years and what the hell do you do with it so is is there stuff that's like I mean, that's just lost in your warehouse. Like you might have some wild it's not stuff. lost, but it's what? Yeah, it's wild. Like you said. Yeah. 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 So what do you do? One point six 
million barrels, there's only so much Donald can do there, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, and, like, and boards only take so many rare releases, right? So uh, yeah. you, you got to pick one, and what do you think will resonate with people? So that's that's the challenge of my job is what do you think is going to sell? Yeah, you can put something on a shelf that's not going to sell. I, and I'm being honest with it. I mean, I, I really don't. So there's stuff there. I mean, some. I don't know what I'll do with it. I can make vodka from it, let it sit there. Maybe it'll come back into fashion. I don't know. That's You're funny. going, oh my God, don't make vodka from it. But that, that's reality. But that's that's the that's the funny thing is that a 52-year-old scotch almost ended up being vodka. a $20 bottle of vodka on the shelf. Yeah. That's Craziness. And I, and I said, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. He's Get rid of it, please. And so I found a way. I found a way. Yeah. It's so cool. That's, that's, that's such a cool story. A story. I, think, I think it's that's amazing. Um, so we uh, we're through the Dram Club lineup, um, and we do have before we get into our final bottle giveaway, we do have Colin. We do have the bonus bottle, uh, which unfortunately Don you don't have with you tonight. But we have the bonus bottle. Do you have one of these with you, Colin? I don't, um, but I can have something else. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one downstairs, uh, but I can tell you a couple things about it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Jameson here, uh, this just got released on uh, October 1st in BC. Yeah. Um, it's worked its way, actually. It was in the States. I know we've got a couple people from down south. It's been down there for quite a bit longer. Um, it's been in Australia, the UK, but really what Jameson did, um, and have you guys tried this yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. Any, okay, yeah. sweet. So... The one thing that struck me right out of the gate um, is that, I mean, number one, they source like premium coffee uh, for the cold brew. Um, they're using Arabica beans. And if, you, if you're in really into coffee, there's basically two types of beans out there, Robusta and Arabica. And Arabica are the finicky ones that are harder to grow, but they give you better stuff. Kind of like Vitis vernifera, vernifera for grapes versus Labrusca. Um, but um, so all that aside, the, it's really high quality coffee that's in there. Um, it, obviously Jameson, uh, you know, Jameson original is a five-year-old blend, um, of malted, unmalted barley corn from France. Um, they, they use sherry barrels, like bourbon barrels. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really nice um, blend. So what that, all that comes together to make this. And what I really loved about it is they, they didn't put any sugar in it. Yeah. That's the big part. It's not like a liqueur yeah. version of a coffee whiskey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and it, like cold brew infused basically which is sad. like we've and we've already got that covered right like kalua does yeah. it right how are you gonna yeah. do better than kalua right and it's like yeah. the salted caramel here like they get the flavors out again right now um but they and so this is like that occasion you notice they drop the abv down too yeah so yeah. you're sitting at 30 yeah 30 um and it's just really easy drinking um oh, one thing that sorry go ahead Oh, one thing I wanted to add in there, because immediately for me, I was like, how much coffee is in this thing, man? Because I want to know, like, am I going to get jacked after like a couple shots of this? Uh, so really, if you break it down for every like ounce and a half or every like standard portion in Canada, uh, there's about like, you know, about like a quarter ounce of like an espresso. So if you if you drank like, like, you know, three, six, you know, if you had six ounces of this, you're basically getting like a shot of uh, espresso. Um, awesome. But then again, you've also got uh, booze working for you too, which is a known yeah. depressant. So I don't, I don't think you're gonna, I don't think you're gonna drink this and be like, woo, like let's go do some push-ups. <laughs> it's uh, but, I might. Um, it, it, I'm all in favor of uh, it replacing coffee in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just put it right in the. Uh... But no, in all seriousness, I think like Jameson is the perfect company to do this because. Generally, like people put Irish cream in their coffee, so this is almost like the opposite version of it. You put the it. coffee put into the yeah into the yeah. Irish style whiskey, and they just like they complement each other. I, I think James has been a, a great innovative company. Yeah, oh, totally. yeah. they had their they stout class versions, and the you know, they they lead the coffee. way on, on yeah. global innovation. And they're it's great. Yeah, I, I, I know the blend of on this. People that are smelling it, you know, along with us, like. Like you yeah. said, it's the fact that it's not sweet, and that's the innovative part yeah. about it to me. To me, it's it's deep, dark, rich, almost mm -hmm. like you know, like and if you've had cold brew before, um, like if you haven't had cold brew, um, this is your introduction to it with whiskey. What an awesome way to do it! Yeah. So <laughs> um, there's um, there's a I think it's Corby Claire on Instagram, 
Yeah. And she was like, what cocktail would you make with this? And I instantly was like, this is espresso martini right there. Like, yeah. Oh, no yeah. brainer. There, there's lots of like, like low hanging fruit, no brainers like that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, for me though, like this is like the occasion. Cause you, you, I mean, Trini, you joked about it like in the morning, but for me, the occasion for this is like happy hour, man. Like you're, you're finishing work. It's like four o'clock, you know, the four to six, um, this is your pick me up. Like nobody wants to rock up to a bar and have a hot cough, like a, you know, a Jameson. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some people do. I mean, it's, it's your own thing, but for me personally, but I'm like, you know what, man, like say I got out of work earlier, I'm going to get a haircut in like 15 minutes. I'm jump, jumping. This is like that, that, you know, in between like, you know, bringing you across, um, yeah, coffee I, old fashions for sure because it doesn't oh, have the sweetness you still got to add a little bit of that brown sugar i was um, reading rare birds 101 that is a great comment though the one coffee, thing that I coffee love old fashions are awesome. awesome. i've never i've never had one i'd love to try one uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah this, okay. this has so much work in it already i mean you don't even really need to add bitters you know like i mean this just pour this over ice try it out like i think this over ice is like a freaking cocktail Th done. this over ice works it. would be delicious yeah. too like <laughs> I think one thing that I love about it is the fact that uh, the sweetness is coming from just the spirit, like the Jameson's yeah. unmalted kind of yeah. malted barley. And, and if you've had Jameson, you know, like they do that triple distillation, malted unmalted barley, corn base, um, French, French, you know, corn. It's a, uh, it's, it's a cool product. So, um, but if I can be completely honest, I'm drinking whiskey with Dr. Don Livermore on his birthday. I want to get back to Weiser's. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to Jameson. <laughs> okay. It's it's your birthday, but you're giving away the presents. So let's give away our last bottle tonight here. So we have uh, the Lot 40, the Dark Oak. Oh, my gosh. It's unreleased. It only comes out in BC tomorrow. Yeah. So or no, a, uh, so I should say Saturday. And it, so... 14th. What yeah. day is it today? Yes. Yeah, so it's the 12th Saturday, today. In two, two days. days, it comes out in two days. I'm holding up three fingers. Um, I'm on I'm on Friday the 13th now. <laughs> yeah, you are. Tomorrow for a lucky you. number in uh, COVID years. So there some, you go. <laughs> somebody's gonna win this before it's even available. How cool is that? Okay, that, that is so cool. It, it is such a great whiskey. And, and I I'm just gonna say it now before we forget. Like, thank you guys Colin, yeah Colin, uh for sending us all this amazing stuff like and thank you for making and, it and up. and for letting us be a part of releasing it kind of so much a fun. part of the release in a lot of ways exactly That's a lot and, of fun a lot of fun <laughs> and you know what our and our dram club members have all had the chance to taste this as well and as well as the wisers 22 before it's released or before it was released so um just a really cool experience for a group of people to try these things uh, even ahead of schedule, right? So, and look yeah. at this sexy bottle. That is a beautiful looking bottle. I hope that stays around for many, many years. Yeah. You guys uh, are part, and you guys are a part of it. Okay. So, we, uh, this was Jared Kaplan's winning number of 315. So, uh, Jared, I apologize. You cannot win again. So, if you do win again, we're going to reap. We're going to replay it. So here we go. We're going to randomize it. And boom. 269. 269. 269. Who is that? If you're okay. on here and you know it, let us know. Otherwise, we're looking it up right we're now. looking you up. 269. 269 just won. Lot 40. Oh, nice. Art Oak. 49% alcohol. 48% um, alcohol. We have Kenneth Kennelty. Pre-release. I think Kenneth Kennelty won a bottle of Weller 12 year old from us once. Oh, wow, he's got a, long, a nice collection a long time ago. Uh, is Kenneth, here? Kenneth like was on here. earlier tonight, he but he, I, th I think he's in New York, yeah, he's probably so he might be sleeping by now. But uh, yeah, we're gonna, I saw a lot of people drop off uh, around 11. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting late, but um, if you're not on, you can still win. So, Kenneth Kennelty, congratulations! congratulations. I, I think that's actually really cool. <laughs> I think that's actually really cool if somebody wins it that can't even get it and has no hope of getting it. That's that's uh, that's really awesome. That's, that's the best case scenario. That's how really. word, word will travel. You know, the the yeah. uh, the legend of dark uh, dark oak will will carry on through the states. Um, I, I you know I before the comments go up, I say Vasily. Sorry if I'm I'm saying your name wrong, Doctor Don. What's your favorite single malt? Oh, uh -huh. oh, 
Are, are you interested? Oh, oh, will course. you answer that question? <laughs> I, I will answer that question. I feel like we've tried to ask that. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like um, well, Wiser's made a single malt. I, don't... Uh, I made a single malt. I'm not happy with it. There's reasons why. I'm not going to get it into. <laughs> so, yes, I do have a favorite single malt. And it, it's a story around going to Chivas. And, and they have a place called Lynn House. Hmm. And Lynn House, if you're part of Pernod Ricard's family, you'll get to stay there. It's supposed to be haunted. It's their brand home, brand center. And they have a little bar with a pool, shoot pool kind of thing. And I was sitting there one night drinking with, with the master blender, master distiller. And they, they had just lab bottles of something going on and drinking that. And, and I started drinking this wine. I said, what the hell is that? I said, this is awesome. And uh, he said, oh, that's Glen Berge. I said, well, what, what's Glen Berge? Well, that's the main ingredient that goes into Ballantines. Oh. It's their flavoring ingredient that goes to Ballantines. And this is probably 15 years ago now. And I'm sitting there, man, this is good. Where can I get this? Well, we don't sell the Glen Berge. Hmm. Huh. This, this is just what we blend into Ballantines. So fast forward another probably 10, 10 years or so. Uh, sure enough, you can buy Glen Berge on the shelf now under the Glen Leather brand name. It's the single malt that gives the flavor to Valentine's. Really? Interesting. That, that's my favorite single malt. Really? And, and is it Canada? Canada? Is it Canada? Uh, yeah, it's available in Canada. I, at least I can get it in Ontario. I'm not sure <laughs> not sure where everyone else is at, but yeah, Glenn Berge. Love it. Love Look it. Look at that. Jason Coates. I just picked up a 1995 Glenn Berge from Signatory. Yeah. Get, get uh, out. No way. And I, that's the signature to Valentine's. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Love That's it. Cool. Well, I'm glad we've uh, cracked some of the mysteries yeah, tonight. Actually, mystery. because like <laughs> we've been yeah. we've been wondering the same thing. Like, there's no way you just drink Corby's products. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! My, my, I, I'm just showing my Corby products behind me here. Yeah. I, it, for me, as a master blender, I mean, I buy everybody's. Yeah. Well, it's the I, way to learn. Like, I, I mean, I. The way I look at it is like I play music in my spare time, but I don't just mm. listen to myself. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like you got to be inspired by all sorts of different things. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely will buy everybody. Some I get inspired from and some I probably had one dram from. And there's one I've actually dumped down the sink and my wife was telling me, why the hell are you dumping that? I can't stand drinking it. Yeah. And can you tell us what that is? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> what are you dumping this for? I mean, yeah. it's okay. Wait a minute. Is that what I do? One more I, think I think it's <laughs> chuckanut, is what <laughs> it's chuckanut. <laughs> that's one I've never had. That's not oh, chuckanut. Yeah, just, we're just kidding. Yeah, don't, 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 don't worry about that. About yeah. That. That's an inside <laughs> joke. Um, okay. Well, are we having one last birthday? By yeah. the way, I'm drinking dissertation, Dr. Uh, Don's PhD. Okay. Oh, that's one I don't have. Oh, you're having a oh he's a, our uh, our dissertations put away. Let's do the um. What else? What else? we have a bunch of uh, well, this was Wisery products. What's huh? my favorite what? bourbon? Somebody's saying bourbon. Oh, that's an interesting. Oh. One. Oh. Ian Ian asked that question. Um, what is Doctor Don's favorite bourbon? That's a difficult question. I tend to gravitate to bourbons that probably have wheat in it. Mm. I really like wheat in bourbons. I, I do like Makers. That's a competitor of mine. Heaven Hill makes a great wheat of bourbon bur called Bernheim. It's probably where I would go. Bernheim is nice, yeah. Yeah, it's probably, probably my taste profile is probably something with a wheat in it, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Weller style products, maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 cool. yeah. I do like, I like, yeah, yeah, I do like those. Let's do the, uh, let's do the 23. A little bit of the 23 to close yeah. things out. Oh, man, I feel like this is sacrilegious. Yeah, <laughs> so close the show out. Okay. All, All right. right. I'll I'll get out to you there, guys. I got oh, a one the bottle. We couldn't get the 150. No, we haven't. No, we got the birthday, the Canada. 2018. Oh, yeah, we got the 2018, but not the 150. We're choked about that. Yeah, uh, one one fifty right. was. If you guys are drinking twenty three. I got a twenty. I got to open my bottle though. Yeah. Oh, you've opened. You've cracked a lot of bottles tonight. That's great. Well, my unopened bottles are in the room next door, so you're you're making me open my unopened bottles. There we that's go. Okay. Hmm. That's okay. Well, we I, had. I got, I got two of everything, so. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good sign. We've had a really good crowd tonight. We've had a lot of people on. Uh, 
it's been a lot of fun. It's been, uh, you know, just it's been a blast. Good, you okay. know, and, and obviously good company and and happy birthday and mm. you know, like I got a, I'm nosing it through a birthday cup <laughs> and it's still <laughs> <in> my faves. <laughs> It knows as well in one of these. I'm not gonna I lie. like to change my glasses, but I've run out of glasses. I didn't expect this tonight, to be honest. With you. So. <laughs> expect the unexpected with Trenny yeah, and C. You know, at least like twelve glasses ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cheers, oh, Doctor Don. Happy, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Thank um, thanks for joining us yeah. like, on your birthday. That's yeah. pretty crazy. But and Colin, thanks for sponsoring Dram Club this month. It's been great. My pleasure, guys. I know that I know the club has been very appreciative of the uh, amazing quality. Uh, we we usually send them yeah. pure garbage every month. <laughs> <laughs> this month they got a real treat. So, oh, you got yeah, you know, the master blender on with you here too. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> that's right. Okay, okay, here we go. Cheers, cheers guys. Oh, this cheers. is. Good. I like say cheers A in Canada. Cheers A. Cheers A. Sixty-four mm. percent never went down so easy. Mm. That is still just so, so good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. We appreciate it. Uh, Don and Colin, uh, stick around for a minute. We are going to end the broadcast. Um, so thank you, everybody. Uh, Colin, Don, any final parting words? Yeah. My, my only thing is uh, follow me at CDN Whiskey Doc if you want to see the life of a master blender. I certainly display it out there in full circle. And we do have some really cool stuff coming. Awesome. Really cool stuff. So yeah. uh, just pay attention. And I mean, literally within the next week, within the next two weeks, within the next month, uh, where there's some cool stuff I'll be announcing. So awesome. Yes. That's it. Cool. Call in uh, Corby.Colin, um, C O R B Y dot C O L I N. <clears throat> and a couple days, you, you got it first here, guys. So a yeah. couple more awesome. days. And Saturday, yeah. get in line, get in line to fight. Fight and put on your armor and your spikes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night.